Hello everyone, I'm Maham Bin Liu from Red Hat. Today we will talk about the Linux bridge. The bridge in Linux has a long history, and um, recent years we know there are some modern switch like uh, OS ON, but uh, the bridge is still used in OpenShift in the cloud network like uh, OpenShift or OpenStack. So today we will see what's the new features to making bridge still put compete with OS and the VM. Okay, uh, first I will do some introduction about the bridge and uh, some uh, leaked features like a bridge net filter, the STP, and then we will talk about the new features like uh, mudcut snooping, um, VLAN filtering, switch dev, and others. Okay, so there's, this is the real switch, real bridge in the, uh, the bridge in the real world and the bridge connects to each endpoint and the cars can go through it to anywhere. So in the network, network world, we have some physical switch, like uh, there are two switch, there are three switch, and the routers, they connect, to, uh, connect our networks. So there are two switch operates at the data link layer, and it could forward the package based on the MAC address and uh, it also, at the same time, it keeps the device in the same VLAN with the same broadcast domain. And uh, for layer, layer three switch, it works at the layer, uh, network layer, and uh, it could uh, forward the packets based on the IP address to uh, different VLAN or different uh, subnet. At the same time, it also supports router protocols protocols like uh, OSPF, um, so it combines, it also, it also combines the layer two switch and uh, so it could uh, separate the VLANs. So at some kind of point of the layer three switch um, acts both like a switch and a router. So what's the difference with the layer three switch and the router? Um, for router, it usually to connect with different networks like uh, LAN and WAN, and um, it also supports a different kind of uh, WAN interface like serial port or DSL port, and uh, some other technologies like uh, MP MPLS, VPN, or firewall or NAT. So the bridge in the Linux is a logical logical switch as the um, like a layer two switch, so most uh, most family is, works at this layer. Okay, here is an example to show the bridge info in the with IP command. You can we can see there are some STP parameters, VLAN parameters, and uh, multicast parameters, and uh, tables. So the bridge net filter. This is a legacy feature that allows to filter bridge traffic with IP tables and IPv6 tables, but the usage is uh, discouraged, and the users should use NF tables to, uh, uh, for packet filtering. So we can just skip this feature. And uh, now, let's think about a network with three bridges connected together, so when the host when the host sends um, like an ARP packet or multicast packet, the packet will loop in the network <laughs> forever until the TTL and, uh, reach to zero. So this will cause a network flood in, in the network and uh, the administrator need to find out, uh, uh, need to aware of this and uh, try to break the link. But uh, in the more than network, the network is very large, and uh, the, uh, the administrator may not aware where is the loop. So that's why that's why we need to use STP. STP is the spanning tree protocol. So after enable STP, the bridge will send the bridge da uh, protocol data units called the CPDUs. So they will electric electric uh, root bridge, and uh, then um, block an interface, for example here. So with this, their work will be loopless, and um, um, the, there will be no, so no network storm. So 
SDB is a crit critical feature to prevent the loops. Um, uh, previously, in like a few years ago, the Linux bridge only support um, RSTP, and uh, recent years we have uh, also supported MSTP, which could be used for multi VLAN. Okay. Uh, here is the uh, uh, command to enable STP. So it's easy. We set the bridge BR0 with STP enabled. After that, with bridge link show, you can see some interface in, is in the forwarding state, and the uh, one interface is in blocking state, which could make the which could break the loop. Okay. Um, I guess uh, some some of you may know. In like maybe 20 years ago, there are some device called a hub. A hub is a device that I mean it will forward all the packets, forward the packets to all the ports. But this would cause a lot of traffic in the network. So uh, the modern switch could um, only forward the packet to the desk port without to trouble others. So how to do that in the bridge? We have the forwarding database table. With this forwarding database table, um, we can see each port has a uh, related MAC address run from the host. So when the bridge forward the traffic, it will search for the table and uh, send the package to the corresponding port that the that MAC belongs to. But if it could not find the um, desk from the table, it will forward the Packets to all the ports. Okay, after talking about the um, unicast or forwarding packets, what about the multicast? So here's the difference like a broadcast of the packets will be delivered to all the hosts. For multicast, it only de delivered to the host that are interested in the packet. For unicast, it will be delivered directly. Um, but uh, what, what if uh, there's, uh, there's no IGMP snooping on the bridge? They will look like this. The router send a multicast packet. The switch will forward to all the ports because it do not know which host, which host <coughs> join what kind of group. And uh, even the host that do not uh, join the group will receive it. But uh, of course, the host will discard the packet directly. But this also caused the trap and um, useless traffic in the network. So uh, after enable the IGMP snooping, the switch will learn the um, groups, the port joins, and uh, send the package to the only the uh, receiver. So same like the unicast, we have multicast uh, MDB, and uh, it's the same like uh, unicast, uh, each port has its related uh, multicast groups, including IPv6 group and v 4 groups. So, how to enable it? It's easy, and uh, we just set uh, multicast looping to one. There's another parameter called the multicast query. This would make the bridge look like a router, because the router will send the um, multicast queries, and the host will, if they join a group, it will reply the uh, multicast group info. So the switch could learn the info and then make the MDB. So we, if we enable the multicast carrier, the bridge will send the IGMP queries to the host, and the MLD, for, MLD query for IPv6. By default, the bridge uh, use the IGMP version 2 and the MLD version 1. You can change it yourself. For example, you can send the IGMP version to 3. And there are some other IGMP parameters uh, defined in the RFC, the bridge supports. You can set them yourself. That's good. OK, another feature is the VLAN filtering. Um, let's see. Uh, Complex, a complex uh, topology like this. So each VM or each namespace has either own requirements. For example, for the net uh, NS1, it wants to receive um, VLAN 2 packets. 
So they want to VLAN two packets received and uh, um, untapped with its own interface. So we we connect this to the bridge one and the bridge one connect to the uh, either 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 zero which is uh, out to the um, bridge. So the VLAN two packets could go through there and uh, to the NS one directly. But uh, for VLAN two, NS two, it want it also want to receive VLAN two packets, but it only do not do not have an interface to untag the packets. So we need to add the ETHO dot dot two there to untag the packets and forward to bridge two and forward to the NS two. A more complex, more complex one, the NS three. It want to receive VLAN three like the like this one, so we add an interface here to untag the packet and go to there directly. But at the same time, it also want to receive VLAN two and VLAN four, for example. And we also need to connect the interface to bridge one to zero. So this is this cause a lot of work to the administrator because we need to create. A uh, lot of bridge, a lot of VLANs. So, what we should do? After enable the VLAN filtering, the topology get much simpler. We can see. We can we can see how to com uh, how to configure it first. Uh, first, we set the bridge with VLAN filtering to one to enable it, and we add the weighted one device with the VLAN two. Which which one device with uh, VLAN two? After that, the VLAN two packets could go to go egress to this interface to the NS one directly, so it can receive the VLAN two inter uh, packets. And uh, next, we set a weight weight two interface with VLAN two. At the same time, we add an untagged flag. Let's skip the PVID and we will talk about it later. With that. The VLAN two inter uh, VLAN two packets will go through this interface, and at the same time, when it uh, go egress, it will be untagged. So the NS will receive the VLAN two packets without the VLAN tag. Okay, the next one, VT three. We first we add a VID two to four, so it can receive the VLAN two, VLAN three, VLAN four. At the same time, we set the VLAN three with untagged. So, as we can see, VLAN three packets could go through here without the VLAN tag. At the meantime, the VLAN two and the VLAN four, they can go without uh, go, go to NS three with the VLAN tag. So we can see this with this complex topology. After we let filter, we can be a very simple one and easy to config. Very easy to config. Okay, so what's the PVID? The PVID is um, similar to the native ID, native VLAN ID in the Cisco switch. With the PVID set, for example, the weight two. When when the when the, name, uh, when the namespace two send a package to waiter two, you know there's no VLAN tag when the on the egress side. So the VLAN interface, the, the, this part will add the VLAN two tag automatically. And uh, the same with VLAN the VT three, with the PVID set, the package goes through this interface if it's does not have a VLAN tag, it will add the VLAN tag by default. So when the package arrives at VT3, it will have either VLAN 2, VLAN 4, or VLAN, VLAN 3 tag at the same time. I mean, I mean, if the package do not have a VLAN tag, it will add VLAN tag, uh, add a VLAN 3 tag. But if already have a VLAN 2 tag, it will do nothing and just receive it. Um, by default, all the port is uh, ha has a VLAN one and with the PVID set. And uh, for 
the package we have we have VLAN one VLAN VLAN two three four. So how to how to set this? We just need to add the VLAN one two three four directly. Okay, this this in, with, with that this part will act like the trunk part in the switch. Okay. Okay. Now there's another feature called the switch dev. This is a um, recently developed feature that uh, the switch dev is an instructor in Linux kernel that could offload offload the kernel forwarding package to the physical NIC directly. So there are two kinds of switch dev Linux support. First one is the Melox SRV switch. Within the e switch model, each VF, each VF on the container or on the VM will have a VF representer. After we attach the representer to the bridge, we can do VLAN filtering, uh, we can do TC rules and forwarding the package based on the FDB entry. And then we can offload the package to the device. So instead of go through the uh, kernel software path, so this will uh, this will help the performance a lot. Okay. Next is the uh, next example is the Melox um, Spectrum device, which looks like a switch, right? And uh, users could uh, simply install the Linux kernel on the on the device. So users do not need to learn about the commands like a Cisco command, Juniper command, or Huawei command. They can just use the IP root command to configure the interface in the Linux kernel. So here is an example. We can see. Uh, it's almost the same with others. We add the bridge. We set the bridge with the VLAN filtering enabled and uh, set the interface to bridge. Set them up. Uh, one thing we need to aware that we need to disable the learning on the port, but uh, enable the learning on the port on the device itself at the same enable learning sync on the device itself. This would, uh, this would uh, enable the learning and the forgotten FDB entries. When the device learn the FDB themselves, it will sync to the bridge. So we can see the bridge FDB. They have some parameter like the bridge zero offload. With this enabled, this uh, the package could be go through the device, the bridge device direct, direct. Sorry, the package could go to the physical device directly instead of go through the kernel. Okay. Um, there are some other features that are recently added to the bridge with how which is something like uh, the VLAN tunnel mapping or the VLAN bridging. This would um, um, convert the VXLAN VID to the VLAN ID. And uh, some like uh, backup next hop ID support, or purport, uh, per VLAN neighbor suppression, or MBA, MAB support, or the STP state, or perf VLAN state, and some backup port. Um, this all kind of features you can find from the main bridge or you can even find all, all kinds of usage examples in the um, kernel repo, kernel self-test repo with bridge prefix. Okay, <laughs> so a little quick. So thank you, Annie. Do you have any other questions? Okay, oh, okay. See? So, uh... Uh, your question is, uh, do we able to configure the 
um, all the configurations uh, with a script instead of a higher level like a, a network manager? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. We have the IP commands. You can set the you can use them in the shell script or even in the um, Python script that all support it. And the, the IP command are also used like a net link interface. So even you can also to develop your own own um, tools to complete if you know the net link interface. Okay. Any other question? Yes, please. Um, do we have to use the bridge format, or is there equivalent to the bridge uh, The question is, do we need to use the bridge command or? Only the IP command, right? Yes. Uh, the answer is, uh, answer is yes. We need to the IP link command is to set up the IP set up IP set up link set up interface, and the bridge command is used to set the bridge specific parameters. They all are uh, in the IP root command root tools. Yes. Any question? Uh, does one need to configure something <coughs> in particular to get rapid stacking tree protocol set up? Or is this just automatically detected when there are other particular messages from RFC tree protocol? Mm -hmm. uh, the question is do we need to do some specific configuration to enable STP? Or it could be do it automatically, right? Uh, your question is to is there a way to uh, to enable RSTP, right? Uh, the answer is the answer is by default the bridge will use RSTP directly, and the recent years we add uh, MSTP, MSTP multi, multi, uh, multiple binding tree protocol, and uh, but the MSTP is added to kernel like two years ago. Um, but I recently, I mean, I checked the user space and I found that the author forgot to post it to the IP, IP root utils. So I asked him and that he, he posted the patch today. <laughs> okay. okay. Any other question? Yes, please. Mm, sorry. Uh, public public generation uh, based on IP specific and the third part bridging. Sorry, we can we can talk it after. Okay. Thank you.